While we start here, management and consulting company Bain and Company thought it had put the crimes of corruption and state capture behind it. But the release of the first installment of the state capture report will ensure that it is held accountable for its actions. Former anti-apartheid activist Lord Peter Hayne has written to Prime Minister Boris Johnson requesting that the British government freeze all contracts with Bain & Co. He joins me now for more details on that. Lord Peter, thank you so much for your time this evening. Let's talk a little bit about this letter that was addressed to the UK Prime Minister uh, calling for all uh, contracts to be actually frozen between Bain & Co. Just how much business does the UK government conduct with Bain & Co.? I'm not sure, to be frank, and it's not just government contracts, it's the many public sector organisations that, that exist in the UK and don't necessarily cl be classed as direct government departments, for example, health authorities, school boards and things like that. So I want the whole lot to say we will have nothing to do with pain until the legal process in South Africa has been completed any prosecutions of Bain uh, are pursued and concluded because, of course, what the state capture report under Deputy Chief Justice Zondo made clear was that Bain had been operating unlawfully. And it's important we remember what it got up to. It helped turn SARS, the South African Revenue Service, from one of the best, most respected, world-class tax collecting agencies into something that was near bankrupt in terms of failing to collect billions and billions of romp that it previously had done. And that was done deliberately by mm. former President Zuma and his uh, placeman, Tom Moyani, with Bain and Co. working alongside them, expressly contracted to do precisely that objective, which was to dismember and render in as uh, completely ineffective compared with what it used to be, the revenue collecting agency. Now, that amounts to massive looting of South African taxpayers by another name. And I don't think a global corporation like Bain and Co. should be, uh, it should be um, in a position where governments across the world are doing any work with it whatsoever. And I hope that all private sector organizations with high standards and high reputations globally will also consider any work with Bain and Company to be something that should also be stopped uh, and future contracts barred until it has answered all the charges and paid back all the fees it earned. It is said to have earned something like a hundred million uh, sterling from all state bodies, as well as um, eight million sterling uh, from. Um, the revenue service. Now you multiply that by 20, it's 170 million or so from the tax revenue uh, agency. And then you multiply the, um, the 100 million by 20 and you get in rent. You get um, 2 billion that it earned in, in fees in South Africa. So and that's just very, very serious indeed. Yeah. I mean, speaking about the seriousness of it, you also say, I therefore find it completely unacceptable that Bain & Co. is licensed to operate commercially in the UK and is endorsed by your government by contracting for work in government departments and public sector bodies. You know, I, I always believe that if you're corrupt on one side, there's no way that you're going to be a perfect angel on the other side of it. Is there a concern that perhaps just like we're finding through the state capture of, of inquiry report that Bain & Co. is involved in dodgy dealings, that there is a possibility that was what was done in South Africa could also be be, uh, be done in the UK well as you, you never know you know obviously this company which has got a global reputation and is a giant operation across the world uh, in the end depends on uh, its reputation it's not like it produces um, you know mines or or manufacturing or anything like that it's got specialist consultancy skills, and its reputation is crucial to getting work. Now, if it has behaved so terribly in South Africa, and the state capture report by uh, Judge Zondo makes it absolutely crystal clear that it has, and if it's done that in South Africa, maybe it's doing that in Britain, maybe it's doing that in the United States of America, maybe it's doing that across Europe or across Africa. So I think that all governments, across the world should take note of the Zondo Commission report and say, hang on, 
We will review our contract with Spain. We will consider suspending its licenses globally, at least until it's paid back the hundred, uh, the, the two billion rons in fees, and, and until it has gone through whatever legal process follows the the, the, the John Doe report, because the John Doe report's made it clear that it's been acting illegally. Now that's a terrible indictment for any company to have on its, uh, uh, on its, as it, as it were, against its name. Yeah. Now, this letter has already been written. What response and, and what kind of response are you anticipating from the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson? Well, I had no response so far and I wouldn't expect to have one. But I think he's got to, I've, 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 I've marked it for urgent attention. I think he's now got to make sure Britain is seen to be leading the way in ensuring that uh, Bain and company are acting according to proper standards and not getting on the gravy train of corruption as they most clearly uh, and conclusively did in the case of South Africa, as is detailed uh, with, with a you know, massive amount of evidence um, in the Zondo report. And I think it's also important we pay tribute at this point to Athel Williams, who was a senior figure within Bain and Company, who's, who acted as a whistleblower when he realized what was going on and gave evidence which the Zondo Commission praised before Judge Zondo and helped nail this company, which has been in denial about its activities. Now, he's been absolutely pillory, treated mm -hmm. shabbily by the country, sacked uh, by the company, sacked, and he's had to travel to Britain, where he now lives temporarily, because he's in fear of his safety. And that also is a question for President Cyril Ramaphosa. He has been quoted as saying that whistleblowers should be protected, especially when they're exposing state capture and corruption, not hounded and intimidated. Well, that's exactly what has happened to Athol Williams, who, who should be regarded as a hero by South African citizens, not pilloried and pounded and intimidated as he has been. Yeah. Would it be possible at this point for Boris Johnson to so sweep this under the rug, as it were, and pretend like the Zondo Commission report that has been made public and is also accessible international, that for some odd reason it does not affect the UK and therefore does not affect him. Is it possible for him to completely sweep this under the, the rug and pretend like it doesn't exist? No, because there are other big corporations who I expect will be named and similarly pillory by the Zondo Commission report in its subsequent reports. Um, why? Because we already know, because it, they have often confessed under pressure of, of investigative journalism uh, to effectively being part of the state capture uh, enterprise. And we think, for example, of KPMG, the global accounting, auditing and consulting firm of McKinsey, another global firm, all admitted to wrongdoing and uh, promised to pay back fees. The banks, KPMG, sorry, the banks, HSBC, a Bank of Baroda, Standard Chartered, all have admitted to having accounts held in the name of the Zoomers and above all the Gupta brothers, and that money by the billions of rand was money laundered out of the country through their banks, through Dubai and Hong Kong, their branches in Hong Kong and Dubai in the main, but also through Delhi, through into Caribbean offshore tax payments. So it's not as, as if Bain & Co is the only global company in the spotlight here. It is mm -hmm. this week. But I expect the spotlight to be focused on other companies that are, that are based in London as well, if not headquartered in London. And that is why Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, has got to step up to the mark on this and say that he will act to ensure that any of these global corporates are barred or suspended from operating in Britain while they continue to um, be involved in these kind of practices in in South Africa, and I just have one final point to make, um, yeah. and that is this. But President, former President Zuma and the Gupta brothers have been rightly criticized for um, and, are, and are sought for their involvement in this whole enterprise and their planning of it. 
but it takes two to tango. And you need corrupt businesses to support them in this, this act, these enterprises. And Bain and Co. certainly did that. And these other global companies have been doing it as well. You know, as you're speaking about this, Lord Peter, we, we often know in South Africa has been extensively criticized for having great investigative um, capacity and capability for uncovering and unraveling the truths that need to come out, no matter how scandalous. But unfortunately, when it comes to follow up and accountability, where people can actually dress up in, in, in orange overalls and serve their time, we lack behind in that. So is there any way, in your opinion, as you take a view of what's going on with the State Capture Inquiry report, which, by the way, is only the first drop that we've got, that we even, as a government and South African as a citizenship, can put pressure so that we do not have the likes of Bain and Co. saying, OK, we won't operate out of South Africa. That's cool. But we've got we can make our money elsewhere and we can still be more profitable elsewhere as well. Because today it's South Africa. As you rightfully said, tomorrow could be another country. Yes, which is why I've made it my personal objective to try and stop this internationally. It's for South Africans, the government, the prosecuting authorities, the police and others to ensure that Bain and Company are brought to justice and that these other corporates, uh, that the same thing happens to them. I share the, uh, the, the frustration that this has been so slow. I, I share the admiration of the Zondo Commission and indeed of the the culture in South Africa for all the other problems that there are in the country that actually establishes a body such as Zondo, which is some, an, an, a, a commission of huge integrity, not just Deputy Chief Justice Zondo himself, but his, uh, his lawyers and all his staff have pursued this with real professionalism. That's admirable. And not many countries would have opened their books as it were, in the way that South Africa has done. And that's all to its credit. But the, the lack of follow-up, and of course, former President Zuma has also left his mark on that because the National Prosecuting Authority, despite being well-led, still has within it the same kind of bad eggs that stopped prosecutions under former President Zuma. And, um, so, and the police service has not been cleaned up fully, and nor is the state security operators. So uh, the, the president is acting and his, and his, uh, his ministers uh, are acting with one hand tied behind their back. And it's up to public pressure in South Africa, not so much a matter for me, but uh, it's, it's up to public pressure and the politicians in South Africa to support their president. And those prosecutors and security services and police service officers who want to do the right thing to help them get these people in orange overalls, as you put it, uh, and get justice done in respect to them as well. We'll leave it there. Lord Peter Hayne, a former Labour Party MP, thank you very much for your time this evening.